Hello all, welcome to the exploiting simple overflows on Win32 series at Pentester Academy. Now in this video, we'll take up a real world application and go bad character hunting with it. So the application we are going to take up is available for free download. It's called MicroP uh, version 011 1600. And I've given you the exploit DB link from where you can download the application. I'm also providing a zip file uh, just below this video as well. Alternately, you can even go to SourceForge and download the application there. Now, in this application, if I were to go to my Windows machine, uh, here is the MicroP application and it actually takes in an MPPL file as input. Now really if you feed in a very large MPPL file this seems to end up causing a buffer overflow attack and that is what we are going to take advantage of. Now keep in mind of course that we you know would be using a lot of tools like the pattern create and all of that and really either you can go ahead and play with them you know on Windows as well. Alternately <clears throat> what I have done is I have a shared folder which is common between the Linux instance which is Kali Linux and the Windows XP Pro SP3 instance right. So I can actually go in here inside the appropriate shared directory and open up exploit.py which is a new file I'm just writing. I can put in user bin python and now if I actually go in here and do a quick refresh you'll actually see that the exploit.py appears here right very simple shared folder between VMs uh, something probably you should be able to do on your own so I leave that to you so now this allows me to develop on my Kali platform while testing it on the Windows platform right so the first thing I'm going to do is create uh, basically an MPPL file right through my exploit code so let me go ahead and make the font just a VB smaller now I'm going to go ahead and create the file we call this exploit.mppl and let me create a very large buffer let's say of size 4000 and all I'm going to do is basically write this into the file and close the file right so if I run exploit.py I'd actually notice there is a new file in there called exploit.mppl and this pretty much just contains all A's, right? Now if I go to my Windows instance, I can see the exploit.mppl file appear in here. So let me go ahead, open it up. And if you notice, I mean the program seems to disappear not very clear if there was actually a crash or did it just exit. So let me drag and drop this into immunity so that we can go ahead and do some analysis. Uh, you get a little alert, click on OK, you're fine. And let me bring all of this in here. So let me run the application now. Now let me open this up. We clearly see that EIP has been overwritten by AAAA or 41, 41, 41, 41, right? Just delighted to see that number appear inside of EIP, just like any other bug hunter would be. Now, 
going by what we've done before you already know the drill we are going to create a pattern using pattern underscore create let me actually create 4000 let me copy this out and paste this inside our exploit.py replacing this line now let me run exploit.py again right so that now exploit.mpll contains the pattern go back in here restart run the application I select the file right now of course there is basically a crash but the value in EIP currently from our pattern is 71 42 35 71 okay let's quickly figure this out 71 42 3571 okay so this is at an offset of 1276 now if this is one of the first videos you're watching in this series and a lot of this stuff seems new please go back and watch the series from the beginning right okay 1276 let's go back in here open up exploit.py delete this line actually construct a buffer of size 1276 the next four bytes is going to overwrite the return address and everything after that would be below that Let's say 300 of these right keep in mind it's pretty much sufficient to just overwrite the return address to trigger at least the crash right that's why I've kind of reduced what I have in the bottom at this point uh, doesn't matter much now let's go ahead and verify our hypothesis right remember to run exploit.py so that we have the new exploit.mpll uh, with the pattern in here and now once we restart the program we run it open up exploit.mpll we clearly see that right now EIP has been overwritten with BBBB which is pretty much what we expected now notice something that ESP currently uh, definitely isn't pointing to that in any way however EAX seems to be pointing to our pattern of A's so let me actually open this up in the dump Aha, our beautiful little pattern is in here, begins here, we have our AAs, right, and of course there could be other stuff down below as well. Now we've sent around 1300 of them, so we could open up calculator. Put in 1300, the hex is 514. Go back in here and actually say go to expression right plus 514. There we go. Now, if you notice our AA pattern, the BBs, the CCs, now all of these are seen right, which means all of this has been put inside perfectly awesome now of course the next task before we move ahead is to find the bad characters now here is what I'm going to do I'd like to trigger the crash every single time so I'm going to have all my A's and B's be untouched and I'm going to play 
with the C's. So this is where I'm going to put in the all possible set of characters, right? And we're just going to monitor this location very closely. So let's go ahead, restart the program. Now, if you recall, we had this file called badcharacter.py, which we used in the last demo, badcar.py. I'm going to run badcar.py so that I get the entire character set copied out. Oops. And open up exploit.py again. and replace the C's with this buffer of all possible characters. Run exploit.py so that the new MPLL file is generated. Now I open up that new MPLL file. Of course, there is a crash. We can clearly see that our A is in it here, right? The dump pretty much ends in there. So let me actually use go to. There we go. Ah, if you notice, just after our last B, we have a zero zero, and then our pattern is gone. Now, my hunch, of course, is this is some sort of a string copy happening. And this null is really a string terminator, which ended up discarding everything else. So let me go back in there and let's remove the first null and see what happens. Regenerate the MPLL. Restart the program. Open up the new MPLL file. As usual, of course, we have the crash, but let's jump right to the location which we are interested in. And this time around, we see the B ends and then we have 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Aha! And again, we have the null added in here which means apart from 00, 0, 0A also seems to be like a bad character, right? So let's remove that from our set. So we'll go back in here. Remove 0A from our set as well. And my suspicion is if you're looking at null 0A, high possibility we'd also have 0D, right? 0A, 0D are really slash R slash N. So now I go back in here, open up the MPPL file. Voila, we have a crash. Let me jump down to the expression. So our B ends here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, blah, blah, blah. 0, 8, 0, 9, 0, A is okay, 0, B, 0, C, and then we have a null again, which means 0, D again has caused a termination just like we had predicted. So let's restart the program. Go back in here. Find 0, D. rerun the exploit. Now remember this, right? You have to rerun exploit.py to generate the new MPPL file. If you forget this, we just end up using the last one. You open it up. Go back in here. Go to the location once again. 
and this time around we can clearly see our entire pattern go through beautifully right beautiful little pattern is going through and the easiest way really to figure this out is actually to go ahead and have uh, some CC's at the very end easy for visual uh, sorry visual inspection to pick it up let's put in 300 of them restart the program so you run it if you go back in here again to our little favorite location and if you notice we can now see we go all the way to FF and then the C's begin awesome <clears throat> which means we have managed to filter out all the bad characters uh, which are 00, 0A and 0D right awesome so what we are going to do right now is follow the last example but in this case we aren't going to be able to do a call EAX uh, sorry call ESP in this case we might need to do a call EAX or a jump EAX right we'll do a call EAX this time around now this and some of the other things we'll take up in the next video it's already quite long 17 minutes uh, but hopefully the whole process of finding bad characters was very clear to you. We have three of them and I'd highly recommend you try this example out on your own. And needless to add, if you're enjoying your time at Pen Tester Academy, then please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.